Hello my friends, welcome to Insulot Electronic Channel, this is Uncle Misha. Today we're gonna talk about this 3D printer and specifically about upgrades what I've done to it. So this is RigidBot and this is a younger brother of RigidBot Big. Though both of those printers were designed in probably 2012, 2013 and they were on Kickstarter and I received, uh, I purchased uh, RigidBot Big and I received it in 2014, July 2014. So essentially that printer serves me, still working pretty well um, since 2014, so eight years. So this particular one, this younger brother of it, I purchased used, someone sold it for inexpensively in 2018, somewhere around that time. And since then it was sitting and collecting dust. So why I purchased a second one? Because I do believe these are the printers which have really good frame. They have steel uh, frame. So this frame designed to be very stiff. It uses steel um, two by two, uh, two, 20 by 20 millimeters uh, bar. So that's really, really good. And uh, I w while I decided to bring this printer to life, I decided to also do some upgrades. So. There are several upgrades I've done. I've replaced stock micro, uh, stock controller or controller board, replaced stock power supply and also uh, hot end. So what's left? Very good frame, very stiff frame, is still original. A, a lead screws, motors, whole wiring is still the same. All these wires are still the same. Um, those uh, bars, eight millimeters bars, are still the same. And um, so essentially all almost all mechanical parts are the same. The print bed is the same, heat bed is still the same. Because this is a really good 3D printer, I think it's really worth to bring it back to life. And let's take a look in details for each individual component what I've done and I will talk uh, more about it and explain what's going on here. All right, guys, so the very first and most important uh, modification is using new board. So this is Big Retouch SKR 1.3. Again, it's a pretty old board, but pretty good for my pur purpose, especially this is 32 bit board, which allow to install your own drivers. The different motor drivers, the difference between this board and the original one, that original one use, used a old a very old um, drive drivers which has no modern bell, bells and whistles like stealth chop um, homeless sensorless homing and things like that so definitely this is very big improvements let me show you what's underneath this lid by the way enclosure i designed myself we have all the original a uh, rigid bot wires right here but in order to adapt those original wires to a, a generic design of SKR3, the generic wiring, I have to use these over here, this bye-bye board. It's designed by Peter Stoneham. Um, I think he's from Australia or New Zealand. I do not remember for sure. But back at the time he designed this and I still have few left of these things, which were very useful. But te technically that's not necessary, just for convenience. So also you can see here a um, TMC2226 uh, drivers, uh, stepper drivers. These are really good and really cool drivers. I like them a lot. So they, they support stealth job, they st support uh, sensorless ho uh, homing, really good stuff. So this is big, big, big improvements for this particular 3D printer. So as I mentioned, here is the, I think this is that switch and it's, as you see, completely disconnected. I'm essentially using this thing as a stopper. <laughs> That's pretty much it, just to make sure I'm, it's stopping at the right space. So let's take a look at the second very important upgrade I've done. So another big change I've done for this 3D printer is using hammer extruder. Hammer extruder is much more a robust extruder than original uh, rigid bot extruder. And um, uh, it's first of all, it has pretty high torque and grip. Also, it allows you to use E3D uh, hot end. So this particular one uses E3D Volcano and it's another pretty cool extruder with, which allow you to do high temperature, high flow 3D printing. So I have designed um, mount, extruder mount, which specifically works with um, uh, two parallel orientation or horizontal orientation of X slider for a uh, rigid board. So yeah, this is uh, this would be probably available as well for anyone to 3D print, but I'm pretty sure this design can still have some improvements. For example, cooling. Yeah, as I mentioned, I would like to have cooling actually built in into the extruder mount not have this dangling thing i hate it a lot so also i built in the uh, build it touch because 
the bad leveling is super important and again another very big improvement over the original rigid bot design because did not have a, a, a homing also this device is used for homing uh, i'm not using switches anymore this is what used instead of switch this uh, build touch um, bad leveling device so another uh, good upgrade or important upgrade for this 3D printer is to using this um, uh, pulley holder. This um, uh, bracket, I would say, not just allowed to, to use smaller uh, pulleys, uh, particularly here is 22 pulley, but also allow adjustability. So this uh, wheel right here, you can rotate it like this and it pulls or uh, stretches the the belt which is way better design than the original just a plastic bracket so this design was designed was as well by peter stoneham that i mentioned before and um, i use this for this is y-axis and the same is used for uh, x-axis i may show you the close-up so another very important design was change of the print bed let's move this so this is instead of glass i decided to macgyver Gerolite plate. So this is Gerolite. Um, I have mixed uh, <laughs> feeling about this uh, upgrade. It's it works, but it's not as good as I thought it would be. For example, I tried to print nylon, and nylon actually peels off of this thing. So maybe this is the Gerolite that I did not expect. Uh, did, did not the right type of garolite, but there is an issue with nylon, it still peels off. The heat bed used here is still original heat bed from RigidBot 3D printer. Obviously, I had to rewire it to use with SKR 1.3. And uh, probably one of the most important upgrades as well is to ditching the original RigidBot power supply. It was disaster. So this one is so much better. So this one is Minwell original genuine Minwell LRS 350 24 24 volt, and this one is awesome power supply. It has cooling, which kicks in only when there is a quite a substantial load on power supply. It, it, if you're just printing something without heat bed or with minimal temperature on heat bed, this is not gonna kick in and not gonna create lots of noise. Another very important feature of um, of those TMCs 22-26 that they are much silent than the original eight. I don't remember uh, original uh, motor drivers. So sorry, the mot not motor drivers. The uh, drivers make a stepper motor is much more silent than it used to be. Very important design change as well. So I do believe this is all hardware grade or major hardware upgrades I've done to this 3D printer. Then one of the important software upgrades is actually to migrating to the latest Merlin hardware, sorry, firmware. The Merlin firmware I'm using in this printer is actually 209. So I've done all necessary changes to the configuration to support hammer on, to support um, build touch, uh, to support, for example, uh, 22 spoolies and things like that. Um, the, the the sensorless homing, stealth chop, and all other bats and whistles, which are supported by those TMC2226s. So I'm pretty happy how this thing prints. The only thing which I cannot wrap my mind why I cannot print on super fast speed, which I thought I would be able to. Uh, so this is something I have to still figure out because essentially what's happened here, it just prints a little bit faster and a little bit better but i mean nevertheless it's still substantial upgrade from pretty much unusable printer to something which actually prints pretty fast because the nozzle installed here is 0 0.8 if i want some to print something big for example like like this case which i designed myself as well that gonna be a no time for 0 0.8 nozzle because it can spit out that the filament is pretty pretty fast okay so there are Many things I've done to this, mostly electronics. Um, I think this is a worthwhile upgrade, so it performs actually quite well. I know that not that big of a community of RigidBot users are out there which, who will benefit from these particular upgrades, but I'll gladly share all my 3D files with community if they want to perform one or 
uh, all of those uh, upgrades. So I do believe also users who uh, don't have completely different 3D printers or want to build 3D printer can benefit from this uh, little uh, overview video if they want to do some similar upgrades or can ask me questions how to do them. So guys, I think that's going to be enough of this uh, uh, little video. And if you like uh, any, you know, and ask a questions, please fire it up. Please subscribe. It's going to help the channel. Um, and I, please stay tuned for uh, new videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.